Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video where I have a very special guest. It's Fiona Humberstone, the brand stylist. Welcome Fiona. Thank you. Now you're here because coming out next week, May the 8th, is your new book, yes. Brand Brilliance. Now some of you who follow Fiona on Instagram might have seen some sneak previews and also she's just started Instagram stories which I'm thrilled about and loving seeing um, what happens behind the scene when you're creating a book. Yeah. So let's talk about it shall we? Yeah. Why did you decide to write Brand Brilliance after your other book, How to Style Your Brand? Well I guess How to Style Your Brand has been really well received but I always knew that there needed to be a follow-up so how to style your brand is literally about styling your brand so it kind of takes you through the process of um, working out how you want your brand to come across and then how do you pick the right colors fonts how do you pick the right designer because it wasn't all about DIYing your brand it was about making smart intentional choices but as we all know that's not where branding starts and finishes so I was always going to do a follow-up, which I guess I was thinking would be kind of how to style your website, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And as I listened to people and, and kind of was hearing what they needed most help with, I realised that as well as needing some guidance on how to make the right choices about your website design and what to include, actually people need help in working out you know, how do I discern what values are important to me? And, and actually, what is my distinctive floral style? And, and how, what does make me different? Because although we looked at that to a point with how to style your brand, I realised that people needed a much more robust process for actually working out where they sat in the market and what they wanted to be known for. So if I'm a florist and I've already bought this book, which is your, your first book, yeah. why do I need this book? What, what's it got in the extra that I would find really useful, do you think? Well, I guess I see the branding as a bit of a pie, if you like. So, you know, we often think about branding as being the logo. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Actually, branding is not about your logo. Your logo and your brand identity, so your, your colour palette, your fonts, your patterns, all of that is a way of communicating to people what your business is all about. But actually branding's much more. Branding's about what people expect, experience and remember about your brand. And you can do loads to influence that. Mm -hmm. So Brand Brilliance is about getting to the heart of what is it that makes your brand brilliant? Because what makes your floristry brand brilliant is very different to what's going to make your neighbour. So it's about putting your business in a category of one and, and really making sure that for that bride, your business is the only possible choice. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear lots about, you know, that's out of my budget and, and for some people it will be. But if somebody has been following you on Instagram for six months and they have fallen in love with what you do, nine times out of ten they're going to find the money if they really, really want to work with you. But to do that, you have to show them a really distinctive, compelling body of work. And they have to see that they're not going to get that working with anybody else. So a lot of it is about letting go of what you're not so good at, what mm -hmm. you don't enjoy so much. You know, we at our workshops, we quite often hear florists talking about, oh, well, I, I didn't like that. And I didn't like working at that venue, but I've kept it on there because what if someone's looking? Mm. And actually, that's the worst thing you can do. It's all about editing to amplify. So editing down to only the things that you passionately love doing, only the flowers that you love working with, only the colours that you love working with, or... You know, thinking about what your take would be on something. So my sister got married in a place called the Lost Orangery. Lovely name. Yeah. So her flowers, obviously, we had to include some oranges in there. And um, the florist that she worked with did an incredible job of making them really tasteful. You know, there's lots of creams and um, corally colours in mm. there. And then the odd splash of kumquats and orange trees. And so we got orange in, but in a way that felt really stylish and natural as well and that you know that when you think of orange you wouldn't naturally think of something that's quite wild and 
Sounds organic. beautiful. It was beautiful. So, you know, for, my, for Emily, my sister, there was only one possible florist. And, and she actually ended up spending quite a bit over her budget because she fell in love with what this florist did. So, you know, it's, it's, it's having the confidence to say, this is what I'm all about. And that takes guidance and it takes focus and guts, doesn't it? To, to say, actually, I don't do this style of floristry. I yeah, don't do absolutely. You know, but some florists may find that they have to work in that venue and do those flowers that they maybe don't love simply because they have to pay the bills. What, what do you think is the solution? You know, what's the best way of them coping with that? Yeah, I mean, it's so hard, isn't it? And when you've got a shop and you've got overheads and you've got staff to pay, then it can be really hard. It's like a tanker that you can't turn around. And I have totally been there because I've had the same kind of business. It was a print and design business, but I've had the same kind of business where you have staff and you're constantly running to keep up with the overheads. But actually, if you can just take a breath, and that's why we're doing the retreat, because it's about taking a breath and thinking, OK, where do I want to go? You know, if nothing was standing in my way, would I be slogging my guts out for people who just want to tick? get the flowers done off their list mm. or or actually you know do I want to be doing less flowers for the same amount of money for brides who fall in love with what I'm doing it's, and I think we all know the answer to that uh, I mean it's, well yeah uh, it, it really you saying that resonated with me as as um I think what this book would be really useful for is florists who are just on the, the at the beginning of their journey. They might just have finished college or they're doing work experience. And, and it's that, how do you decide at the very beginning what your style is going to be and, and how important it is that once you do know what your style is, that you give out that, that message on yeah. social media. And so what advice would you give to people who are just starting up and they're really not sure, you know, what to do mm. with regards to their, their website, their logo, their style. What, what's your advice? So the, I think the great thing about working through this when you're just starting is that every, you start on the right foot. Mm. So there's this kind of myth that as you're building a business, you're going to make losses and you've got to do work for, for free or for less than you're worth just to prove yourself mm -hmm. but actually if you're really good and you believe in yourself I would never advocate charging more than you're worth but most of us don't charge enough so um, getting it right from the get-go and only taking on the work that helps you get to where you want to be so um, not not taking on work in the wrong venues with the wrong style just to fill up your diary but actually thinking okay I could probably be doing one wedding a month or one wedding a week instead of three or four weddings a week mm -hmm. and you know and this applies actually more to successful florists that have been in business a long time because you really know you really feel that pain and you know what it's like to take on the wrong work um, and also you've got the confidence to know what you're capable of so I think it works at both levels um, but to go back to when you're starting, um, I think the first thing is you, you need a vision for what's possible. You need to think about where you want to take your business and and stay true to that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't don't be swayed. There's always going to be people that will want you to do different things for less money. And you don't have to be rude about it. It's not about being rude, but it but it is about at every level. It's about demonstrating your worth. No one's going to tell you they'd like to pay you more. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about understanding yourself the value in what you do trying to put yourself in a category where only you can do what you do and then showing people and that's the other half of the book is um you know the first half is about getting focused then if you like how to style your brand kind of slots in the middle oh so it just fits in just about there okay so you work out what you want your business to be known for. Mm -hmm. Then you pick up how to style your brand and you style your brand. Okay. So you end up with a lovely logo and, what's and the second lovely half? patterns. And then you communicate it all. So and then it's about... Like invoicing and... Yeah, I mean... Every touch point, wasn't it? it? Yeah, every touch point. Um, so, you know, florists, particularly for florists, 
um, having a really good PDF that you can send straight out to inquiries the day they inquire. So wedding inquiries. Yeah, or any you know any kind of inquiry, but saying this is who we are, this is how we work, this is the value you can expect of us, and here's some draw droppingly gorgeous photos of work we've done. Um, that's going to put you head and shoulders mm. above anybody else. But yeah, it does come down to invoices because when when you send over the invoice for the damage. Do you want your client to get that sinking feeling and think, oh, they really don't like working with me? And I have that. You know, I've had that with people that work with me that send over invoices and I feel, oh. (laughs) Um, So what are you saying? The way the invoice works or the the, the words in the email? The way it's designed, the words that are in the email. You know, sometimes it's just a case of putting one line in saying, so lovely to work with you again. You know, and it just sets you up for future business, doesn't it? But it's that little detail. Yeah, little detail. It's it's things like um, presenting your work in a way that people can really get on board with and get excited mm. about. So particularly with floristry and particularly if you want to be doing one wedding a week or one wedding a month instead of five weddings a week, actually it's about elevating the way you present your work so instead of sending over something that looks a bit like an invoice with all the flowers that you might use on it creating something visual and you know bringing them along on the journey so all these visual elements Mm. what kind of software do you recommend people use that's quite easy to use to create a pdf what would you um oh i don't know that i would recommend a specific piece of software i think it totally depends on um what your background is and what your experience is. I mean, you could use Word if you're happy with it or PowerPoint. I use InDesign. I think what's more important is that you understand how design works Mm. and you understand how to create a document that's going to grab your bride or your client's attention. It's it's not just a visual, it's the the copy as well, isn't it? So your book covers... So there's a bit, there's a bit in the middle called The Absolute Essentials for Modern Marketers and in this bit yeah I'm covering all those bits from planning because actually you need to sit down and plan first I know it sounds obvious but people just don't do it um writing great copy if you can see that so there's stuff on writing copy there's design for go-getters because um as a designer nothing breaks my heart more than creating a gorgeous brand identity for a client and then them um sending something out that looks very different (laughs) and you know what you need to be sure you might not have the imagination or the experience that your designer's got but you can create something that looks professional Mm. you know you can make sure you use the same font you can make sure you use the same color palette Mm. there's kind of basic layout rules that you can follow and that's all in there yeah, I remember when we used to work together a long time ago. Yeah. How um, you wrote blog posts. I mean, now your I mean your blog is still amazing. I know you, you your blog posts are really long. Yeah. <laughs> you don't blog for a little while, and then no. suddenly there's like a big spate of, of blogs. And I remember one blog post in your old company, and it's all about thinking about maybe only having one or two fonts for your. Yeah. Blog. So yeah, what, yeah. What's your recommendation for? Ben- oh, do you know? I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too specific, but I would say, yeah one two three fonts and it's all about proportion you know Mm. think about the rule of thirds and as a florist you've got a really good eye anyway Mm. you understand about proportion and balance and and sometimes that eye needs a bit of training into graphic design and it just needs looking at things a bit differently but Mm. yeah think about balance space proportion leaving space around things lining everything up so um here you've got space lots of space here which just makes it feel more elegant you know if that had been wall-to-wall text yeah like the small ads it would have felt a lot cheaper Mm -hmm. and faster and actually you see how much space I've used here yeah that gives it a feeling of expansiveness and expensiveness which is what you want if you're elevating your brand do you talk about colour psychology in this book a little bit because lots in there's tons in how to style your brand Mm. um it's hard for me not to talk about it because it's (laughs) (laughs) it's kind of it's such 
uh, an easy shortcut for anyone once you worked out what your brand stands for? It completely changed yeah. for Arona for me. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Knowing I was summer yeah. and knowing that I should only really put out muted colours on everything. It's because exactly. you know, I don't put red, I don't yeah. put any more green, I yeah. don't put, you know, bright blue. Yeah. But that was so revel you know, co yeah. complete. Yeah, I was quite shocked actually. Yeah. And when, when I decided to film in the studio, this bedroom, mm. Look at the colour of the yeah. wall. It's just yeah, it's perfect flower in colour. Yeah. yeah, but it was for, you had to point that out to me. I mean, yeah. So if again back to the, the, either the newbie florist or mm. the person who's been going 10, 15 yeah. years, how how can they really think about what their colour palettes, colour psychology is to help them with their cohesive look of their brand? Well, I think more than anything, you've got to know where you sit in the market, what makes mm. you different and what message you want to send out. And then what's really, really, really important is that you focus on how you want people to feel. Okay. So, you know, I put the colour psychology out there because I think it's a really powerful tool. Mm. But it's not worth losing sleep over. It's not worth kind of getting wound up about what season a particular pattern is. You know, it's all about focusing on how things make you feel so we know how the color the summer seasonal personality makes you feel mm. you know it feels calm it but it's feels not just elegant. you is it it's your, how your clients will feel yeah, exactly Seeing and that's it. why if you understand how you want your brand to feel mm. you know we've pulled in all those elements we've pulled we've thought about your clients we've thought about you we've thought about your competitors and all the other things and we we distill it down in that mm. first section that's called brand clarity okay. so it is about taking all those things and mm -hmm. distilling it down into one neat message once you've got that mm -hmm. you're in a much better position to tackle how to style the brand or the stuff that comes in here right so once you know that you want flower owner to feel maybe elegant sophisticated quality then yeah the color psychology totally helps and mm. it, it is revolutionary but actually all you're doing is you're thinking you know, you're picking up a mug or you're picking up a wine glass that we might use for our workshops mm -hmm. and you're thinking, how does this feel? Does this feel elegant? Does it feel sophisticated? Does it feel right for flower owner? Mm. And I, I almost want people to trust their instincts more. Yeah, it's, it, it's something I think we're all so rushed mm. and there's just not enough time yeah. and and sometimes you just put up with something because that's all you've got to hand yeah. but it's it's i suppose it's a planning thing and being yeah. organized isn't it and yeah and just nobody gets it all right all the time mm. and it's about letting go of it all being perfect and just thinking well this is this is good and it, it's intentional and yes i might change this bit moving forwards but it's actually fine but it's making that first Sort of lying in the sand yeah. and, and having a starting point. Yeah. And you know, most most of the powerful stuff, I think, you know, it sounds a bit odd for someone who calls themselves the brand stylist, but actually most of the powerful stuff happens in your focus. So the mm. brand identity, your logo, your colour palette, that's the icing on the cake. That's that's what makes it easier for the right kind of people to win to, to choose you. But the biggest thing is your mindset. You know, getting your head clear on, you know, the value you add, what you want to go below. Yes, well. about, you that know. big C word. Yeah. That, you know, some, so many florists I speak to, mm. and they say, you know, the people who are just starting up, they're like, I'm not sure if I'm ready to do this, and you know, what will people think? And I think, you know, they're so lucky in a way with social media because they can get immediate feedback yeah. on what people like. But it's not, it's not just the people just starting out that lack the confidence. We've quite often mm. spoken to florists who have been doing things for 10, 20 years, who are still finding it difficult to say no to the buttonholes for five pounds or, you know, mm. or work that isn't- Doesn't really like them. Like, doesn't like their fire and no. doesn't do them justice. No. And I think, you know, no, no amount of lovely branding is going to win you the right kind of work if in your head you're you're in the wrong So what's place. the magic answer? The magic <laughs> answer is to work out what makes your brand brilliant and communicate that through everything you do. And then would you have like, you know how I'm very logical, yes. would you have like a, 
a, a, a whole like an A4 sheet that's like your your Bible or how you know what would you say for people who want to keep on coming back to their, mm. their focus? That's a good question. So I guess for me it is in my head, but yes, for my clients I create them a brand blueprint. Okay. And the brand blueprint has all the stuff in it. Is this a hard copy? It's a nice. Or... I should have brought it, shouldn't I? Um, it's in here once we've worked out what your message should be and then what your visual how your visual style okay. supports your message. So you could do a mood board, couldn't you? You could totally do a mood board and I suggest that you do that. Yeah. Um then I would suggest you come up with a brand blueprint that's almost it's more than a brand manual. Mm -hmm. So a brand manual says this is your logo, okay. these are your fonts, these are your colours and when you're working with another designer you send them your brand manual and they know in a snap what you know how to make your brand look like yours whereas a brand blueprint oh, I a made whole it section up. here yeah there's a whole section <laughs> is it, and is I made it, it up it's a Fiona thing okay and um the idea is that it's in a snapshot so new member of staff joins or you know you work with someone a coach mm -hmm. or a marketer or anybody and you have this lovely pdf or lovely hardback book that you can send them that kind of talks about your brand position okay um what you want to be known for, the products that you sell. And it's a really good way of streamlining down your products as well because lots of my clients have too many products and they don't all make sense. So it's about streamlining some of that down. Um, your brand essence, you know, what, what, what the magic is that you bring to every job that you work on. So as a florist, what's your creative style? And then you would put your brand identity in, you'd put your brand voice in, your colours, your design aesthetic but it just yeah for the logical amongst you it keeps things neat and tidy and it doesn't mean that you can't refine it or change it as you no, go on. No it's a starting point. But it's yeah it's yeah. there yeah. yeah. Great. So what would you say for a florist the mm. three key messages are from your book? Um, well first of all think bigger about your business you know really really think about celebrating your magic um, owning what you do, owning your style and making your company the only possible choice for a very specific bride. You can't be all things to everyone. Or event company. Or yeah. event, yeah, or, you know, whoever your target market is. But, but making your company the only possible choice and, and, and create a destination brand, so one that people will move heaven and earth to work with. I mean, our workshops, we've had people flying from all over the world. And so many the forestry world. workshops, so yeah. many people flying from yeah. all over the world. Yeah, so wow. they are true destination brands, aren't they? Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. you don't have to have retail premises, you don't have to be running workshops to do that. Um, it's about people only wanting to work with you. Mm. So that's the first thing, is create a destination brand. Elevate your idea of what's possible and create a destination brand. The second thing I would say is understand the basics about how to communicate. So, you know, understand how design works and make sure that everything that goes out reflects your new elevated version of your so company. So digital and hard copy. Yeah, yeah, all of it. And, you know, invest in a designer. Don't try and do it all yourself. I think sometimes because I, I show people how to do things, people think that I'm saying you have to do it yourself. And I'm not. I'm saying this is how it works so that you can make better choices about designers that you work with and if you want to do it yourself. So the word designer, yeah. just to avoid any confusion, Yeah. Uh, what sh who should you... Is it a graphic designer? Yeah, look for a graphic designer. A graphic designer, yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, I cover this a little bit in the book as well, but I've covered it a lot more in How to Style Your Brand. Um, you want a brand designer or a brand stylist. For your brand all. identity. And then when your website, you want... Your website, you probably want a web designer. Your brand stylist might be able to do it. Mm -hmm. They might not be commercial enough. And I talk about that a bit in the book as well, about, you know, don't feel that you can abdicate all responsibility to your brand stylist. You need to put some work in as well, commercially. Okay. Um, web developers are there in the background to build things. Okay. but their focus is not on the aesthetics. No. And particularly as a florist, it's really important your website looks gorgeous. But actually, as a florist, you don't need that much technical 
staff. So actually, something like Squarespace mm. is a really, really good start. Yeah, we point. know some of our the florists yeah. have gone on workshops and yeah, yeah. on websites. Yeah. So, so those are two of the key messages. Yeah. What's the third key message? So, um, so after the absolute essentials, we talk about how to create a website that wins you work. And you know, there's tons of good stuff in there that you need to think about in terms of planning your website. But the chapter I think I'm most excited about in the whole book is this one, Beyond Brilliant. And this is all about elevating your brand to a level beyond everybody else's. And this is about the kind of things that you can do to nudge yourself forward and make that right impression. So it is things like creating a services brochure. It's about... What's the services brochure? Services brochure is... Um, something you can send to your inquiries to say these are the services that I offer okay I couldn't think of a better name but you know it's a mm -hmm. PDF no, it's fine. that says so that if you the, wanted a bridal bouquet these are the different types we offer and yeah but a bit less I suppose like I was saying a while back about um you know this is who we are this is the value we bring okay so here's some of our gorgeous focus. work okay yeah but but actually and this is another big thing in the book is it's not about putting the focus on you. It's about putting the focus on your client. What we can offer you. So <clears throat> you look at most people's proposals. So I talk about upping your proposal game in here as well. Most people's proposals, if they bother to do one at all, the first, you know, the first page of the cover letter, first thing you see is about us. And there's this whole ream of company history. I mean, who cares? It's not about you, it's about your client and how it sol how you solve their needs. So I'm, again, I'm kind of giving you a process in the book, how to structure your proposals and how to win more work and, and just how to design them so that they add more value and they feel like, you feel like a company people want to work with. So many florists, when they're first starting up, have a real struggle thinking about their company name mm. what advice would you give them oh it's so hard i think naming a business is one of the hardest things um so there's a few pages in here on how to name your company for that very reason i think first of all if you understand what makes you different what message you want to communicate actually coming up with a name is not that hard you know because if you know that i don't know you you're all about lush botanical palms for argument's sake, actually finding a name that reflects the feeling that that gives, mm -hmm. it's quite doable, isn't it? So yeah. it's having that focus in the first place. Um, there's pros and cons to using your name. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you wouldn't do it. Yeah, if you want to um, sell a business, then... You yeah, if you want to sell it, just, you know, for general separation from your business as well, it's mm -hmm. ideal that you don't. Um, makes it easier to scale if it's not under your name um, but it, you know people go with their name because coming up with a really good company name is really hard yeah so I would say think about how you want to come across brainstorm words that evoke that feeling that you know f think a bit left field so you know if, if we're going down that kind of botanical lush Think about people in history, the people in myth and legend ah. or think about colors or you know the the whole colour animal thing's been quite done to death now, as have kids' names as well, that, you know, Posy and Tozy or whatever, um, <laughs> it's been done a lot as well. Uh, I don't know that there is a Posy and Tozy, but, you know, so. um, two kids' names is, is done quite a lot as well. So just try and think about something that ideally is, it means something to you, mm. but is separate, because actually at some point your business is going to get really tough, and uh, do you really want it? to be named after your kids or you you know and and sometimes having that bit of separation is a good thing yeah and, and I also think, keeps you focused absolutely and I think sometimes well, going back to what you're saying earlier less is more yeah so just because people sometimes find it difficult to remember mm. the company name sometimes shorter is better sometimes but I think you know it's hard enough to come up with a good name so mm. to add that extra mm. um What's pressure. The word? pressure and uh, category on top is too much and actually on that um, don't let go of a really good name because you can't get the domain name so what so if you've got do? a great name um, you add another word in for the domain okay so you can keep the word so in, something in flower, some, flowers maybe or floral design or yeah or studio or 
creative or um, design. There are or, lots of extensions, dot co's. And yeah, dot me, dot net, out, all yeah. of those things. And yeah, it used to be a bit naff and it's not ideal, but if you have the perfect name, mm. don't let it go just because you can't take the domain name. I mean, for you, you were, you were a blogger. I mean, obviously your business is much bigger than that, but you were a blogger. It was important that the domain was short and snappy and memorable, but actually... Less so for somebody like a florist where they're falling in love with the work. Mm. You know, you want to just create the right impact. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, this book is available for people to pre-order now? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, where can they order it from? Uh, so it's on Amazon.com, Amazon.co.uk, uh, Waterstones, um, lots of lovely independents as well. Um, and my website okay uh well i was going to say we're doing gift boxes okay uh we have actually sold out oh which is great for me <laughs> not so great for you um but well, yes thank you so oh, incredible you can still pre-order signed copies for me okay. on the blog um so yes so i'll put links to those below thank you and um is there anything else you'd like to add i just hope you love it i love this book I loved, I loved How to Style Your Brand. I still do love How to Style Your Brand. I'm very proud of it. But I think, I it's think this game. takes it to a whole other level. Yeah. I hope you like it. Well, it's been a lot of work, I know. Yeah. How many years in the writing? Two years. Two years. Yeah. yeah a lot of yeah. work. And you can tell by the Thank book. You. So congratulations, Thank Fiona. Thank you. Um, I hope you found this interview really useful today. I'm inspired and I can't wait to read the book and I've done some proofreading of it and still <laughs> I'm really excited about reading it. So thank you so much, thank Fiona, you. for coming in. And thank you for listening. It's been great. I hope you've been inspired. I'll see you next week.